Hello and welcome to my channel. In this episode, I built a kit for a really handy device, an SD to IC. With an SD to IC, you can load files for um, a floppy disk drive. In this case, uh, D64 files. We built a SD to IC for a C64. And you can load these files from a SD card with an SD to IC. So, and so you ha don't have to struggle with uh, bad floppy disk or bad drives. Today I get the most. Today you get the most files for your C64 online, and so you have them in on your computer, and so it's easy to load them on SD card. And that's the reason why I built an SD to IC. So enough talk, enjoy this video and let's start it. So here are components on my bench. You see it's a kit. I bought this kit on eBay. I put the link in the description. In this kit is a good menu in German and in English. And so Let's start it. First we put the main PCB in the PCB holder. You see the SD card reader here is pre-installed. So you don't must Solder this on. So first we start with the socket for the IC. So I'll use some electrical tape here. It's a little bit long. Just to hold this in place. To solder the first two or three legs. Then we can Get this away. So we don't need this. And now we solder the rest of the legs. So the next thing we soldered on is the crystal for this device. So now we have the first parts on the board. The next are the resistors. Let's start with the first resistor.
Now we have the resistor packs. Solder this on one by one. On the next step, we solder on the capacitors. First, we start with this one. And on the second step, we use these two tiny capacitors. I laid them on the board, you can see it better. These three capacitors has no direction, so you can put this on the board how you want. one here and this one here And now we have a capacitor with direction. The marked lead, the short one, you see, short and the long. The long one is for positive and the short one is for negative and the short one is marked with a minus. So this one comes here. Here on the board is direction marked so take control yes it's right And now we have the voltage regulator. It's this one here. This is there in the hole. And you bend the legs a little bit. It's the middle one. We must bend a little bit backwards. Cool. 
then we put this in the holes bend this a little bit out and then we can solder it on so And all we do is in this manual, it's step by step, we are now here on this. And to make it so like this is here in the manual. So the connector for the wire, for the external power supply, you can use here. This is on, and now we put the LEDs in. Here also, the positive lead is longer than the negative one, and on the negative lead is the body flattened out. You see this shape here on the positions so I have to bring this in the right direction bend this out also the red one and then we can sort it as on So, the next thing is the jumper and the dip switches. So, and here we have the positions for the dip switch. The dip switch is to select the number of the floppy device this is. And you can switch on and off the SD to IC over this. So now we have this. And the next step is the connector of the board for the LCD. This is 
done. Now we keep the little, move this a little bit up. And the next is this potentiometer. This is for brightness control by the display. This also, and you see, it's it's very easy. You uh, only have follow the manual step by step, and then it's all good. The next are the two serial connectors. It's the same. Put this on the board. Plug this in. Oh. This sits without tape. That's good. So, the serial connectors are on, and the next step are the switcher, the switches. Now we put the board holder here. The same procedure we put the on the surface of the PCB. It's sitting very straight and tight fit. So you don't need to put any tape or something else to hold. this like this and like this oh So the switches are soldered on properly and now we have this soldered on and the last thing we have to solder, it's very complete, is the LCD, the pin roll on the LCD. So let's do this. Have to look this if this solder this pin roll straight as possible. The most more straight uh, you soldered on. 
that fits better on the on the board. So the solder job are done. Now let's check the solder job. Looking good. So the last step we have to is to put this wheel on the pot. That's for adjusting brightness on the LCD. Now we put on the standoffs. The larger ones on the bottom, that's the feet. And the shorter standoffs on top, that's holding the screen. Now push the LCD on, the connector, almost on top of the connector, put the screws in, So, and now let's put the microcontroller. It's an Atmega 1284P. Put this in a socket. Look, the, the notch on the socket, the notch on the controller, and the notch on the six screen are in the right direction. So now we are finished. Next thing is put this in the C64 and test if this thing works. So if you see I have this plugged in my C64C um, and now the C64 is on. You can see the display is uh, very good to read. The peel the foil off. So. The four buttons are for reset the C64. This uh, function only works if you have this in the expansion port. If you have this powered with an external power supply, you uh, the, the function does not work. This button resets the SD to IC. These two buttons are for disk swapping. If you're um, have you a game with uh, multiple disks, you put this in a folder on the SD card and then if the game started you can push both then it uh, it creates a text file and so you have auto disk swap. Otherwise you can 
the step down, step up for disk swapping. Let's see here the address. This is uh, the first floppy disk drive. This uh, 0.08. On this switch, the first dip switch is for on, and the other two you can uh, you can configure um, the address if you had um, drive eight, drive nine, ten, or eleven. So see this cable goes in the serial port. So that's all for that. And now I show you if this thing works. So here the C64 screen. Um, this uh, blare is from the camera. In reality it's not there. And you see the reflection of the light. No. So, take the slide off. See better, better. So, it starts all. With this, loading, and then list, you can see there's the binary file for flashing the SD2IC. If you have an update, you can put this in the root directory and then you can flash this SD2IC. The games browser uh, directory, there are the games. Put the SD card in your computer, copy the files in there, and then you have the games on the right directory. If you have games with multiple disks, put this in an own directory in the games directory. And here we have a file browser. This one we will use. It makes all easier. Loading the file browser and then run, and you see we have a file browser. In the file browser, we can use the arrow keys. See, it's loading. There are a lot of games in there. You can see a lot of lot of games. So we choose Bruce Lee, and then you press enter, and it's loading. See, the game is loading. Yeah, and now you can play Bruce Lee. You see, it's very handy, it's very easy. And so that's it. The SD2IC works. Oh, SD2IC works, and now. You can play this, it's very handy, it's very easy to use. And that's it. So this is for this episode. This uh, I2C was uh, fun to build and very easy. If you want to build one on your own, I put the link in the description. And this is a good way to load software without having any working floppy or cassette drive and so you have you don't have to struggle with uh, bad floppies or bad cassettes or the bad drives if you like this video hit the like button if you want more videos uh, of my channel then subscribe and so i see you in the next one